Hello everyone and welcome back to Lucky Loads 15 where you've tuned in to day two of uh, Glorious Goodwood Predictions where we'll be previewing the whole card in the format of two each way Lucky 15 bets. But if you're not uh, familiar with the Lucky 15 bet, there's normally four selections in each Lucky 15 that makes up the bet and uh, we will be going over to Galway to uh, make up... Uh, the four selections there so uh, stay tuned for our Galway selection which will be the last uh, prediction at the end of this vlog but um, I'm just going to go through on how uh, today's selections ran at uh, Glorious Goodwood it wasn't a bad day now in the format that we um, did like the bet as it were we weren't really on to any profits today but at least all our selections ran creditably at least and we didn't have too many bad ones we didn't get a winner today at Glorious Goodwood but we had a few near misses and we had some good places that if we were there at the race course and did it just as a single on the each way, we would have got a nice little bit of return. So all in all, it wasn't the worst day um, you're ever going to have. Today, it was definitely the bookmaker's day. There was a lot of surprises um, on offer today. We had a 100 to 1 winner. We had a 33 to 1. We also had uh, Breton Rock for David Simcock at 50 to 1. And also Stradivarius as well beat Big Orange. There was quite a lot of um, big price winners out there today. A few surprises. And it was really hard um, to predict the winners today. And a lot of... Uh, Pundit's predictions just went out the window and on days like today anything could happen really but that hasn't put us off and we've uh, made this uh, special vlog uh, for day two of Glorious Goodwood so we'll run through the, those in a minute but if you're brand new to the channel here I'm a tipster that does uh, horse racing tips every day in the format of an each way lucky 15 bet and the reason I created this channel is because in September I'm going back to university to study a degree a master's degree in fact in sports broadcasting journalism and I created the channel just to have a little bit of fun create uh, and upload videos every day about horse racing which is the sport I love and I do have plans later on down the line to maybe go away from the betting side but still keep it our for fun going here on the channel with our each way lucky 15s every day but maybe we could get out there to some horse racing trainers and show you kind of the behind the scenes of horse racing which is something I am passionate uh, showing the general public about because I think it's a really mis misunderstood sport in this country and around the world generally horse racing because everyone probably thinks it's all about the winners, the gambling, the social side of it but I think there's a lot more to it and it needs to be presented in the media so that's um, another thing for another day so please subscribe to us already if you haven't done so already the more subscribers I can get the more likely I can improve this channel and get some better content on the channel. So please subscribe us and follow us in our journey to eventually become a horse racing journalist, which is my dream job. Also as well, just got one or two other things to mention before I um, get into uh, tomorrow's lectures at Goodwood. Um, I just want to say, please can you not comment um, violently towards each other? I have noticed that there has been a couple of battles between a few of... Um, the people that commented on my vlogs and I have subsequently deleted those comments. This channel is just a bit of fun at the end of the day and if you can't take losing uh, when it comes to uh, making selections or you're just going to have a go at each other uh, like with stupid threats I think you shouldn't even be on here commenting on my channel because at the end of the day this is just a bit of fun and I know horse racing we all like to predict the winners but often it's the case that we predict more losers than we get winners but it's just a bit of fun at the end of the day on the channel and please can we just concentrate on the horse racing which is something that I just want to focus on on this channel I don't want to get into any other distractions and this is what the channel is all about it's about horse racing and what we think will run well and current themes and other things that are going on in the sport so please can we just stick to those please so um that's my gripe on that one over also tomorrow watch out for our episode two of the loader look which will be coming up tomorrow my thoughts and reflections on what happened in the big incident at yarmouth last week with um the wrong horse running in the race uh, I'll be discussing that in more depth uh, tomorrow. If you missed our first Load of Look episode, it was a debate on who's the better jockey. Is it Ryan Moore or Frankie Dettori? You can go back and see that video a few videos ago. So um, they're going to be uploaded roughly every Wednesday when I have time, which I'm currently... They're my days off at the moment, so they're the most likely days where I actually have time to go away and do the research and uh, film a vlog. So um, stay with us from that one and watch out for that one tomorrow. Just going to go through on how today's selections ran. We did already 
briefly touch upon it. We had a few good selections. I won't go through all of them. Our main best selections were um, Home of the Brave um, in the 3 o'clock at Goodwood. Got beaten by Bretton Rock, the 50-1 outsider. We also had a moment of madness as well, which I thought was going to win it. Rallied back very well for Charles Hills and Harry Bentley, but just got denied on the line. So that was our probably two best predictions today. We also had one or two other ones. We had the Mark Johnston runner, Mildenberger, which got a really bad start, but then ran on really well towards the end. And I think if it got a bit of a clearer run, because at one point it was boxed in, it could have challenged, um, I think it was the Michael Stout winner in the end. So all in all, it wasn't a bad day and hopefully we can uh, bounce back tomorrow. But it's going to be another tricky day tomorrow because of the old weather. It's due to rain tomorrow at Goodwood and the ground's going to get soft. So a lot of these selections have taken that into consideration on the weather forecast tomorrow. And honestly, a lot of these horses don't have a lot of form on soft ground, especially the top horses. So there could be a few surprises tomorrow. And I've bared that in mind when uh, looking at the runners and riders tomorrow. So our first uh, selection for day two, going through the card on our Each Way Lucky 15 uh, bet for our first Each Way Lucky 15, there will be two. So uh, pay attention if you don't understand the format. But our first selection is in the 150 at Goodwood. And the horse that we've gone for here is Star Rider, trained by Huey Morrison and will be ridden by Adam Kirby. This horse won this race last year very nicely. And even though it's £9 higher for when it won last year, this horse does have um, form on uh, soft ground. And also I believe that course and distance form tends to really uh, hold good value here at um, Goodwood. And I thought at 10 to 1, that was quite um, an interesting bet. And also as well, a lot of um, bookmakers will be paying quite a lot of places tomorrow. No Sky bet are paying six races on the race. So um, I thought that Star Ride at 10 to 1 could be one of the more likely contenders in the race, but again, it's quite a tough race to get your teeth into. But that's going to be our first selection there, Star Ride at 10 to 1 for Huey Morrison in the 150 at Goodwood. We then go to the 225 at Goodwood, which uh, the horse that we've gone for here is a horse called Sophia's Rock, trained by Mark Johnston, who's a bit hot and cold. He's very hard to get right. Sometimes you can get him, sometimes you can't. When you think he's had a shocker, stick a horse in the race a couple of weeks later that had a shocker and then it will bounce back and win tremendously and you think why didn't I back it? This horse is a little bit like that but it tends to run uh, better than it doesn't, Sophia's Rock. He will be uh, using the services Mark Johnson tomorrow on this horse of Ryan Moore which is a good jockey book in. This horse is currently 13 to 2 of bookmakers at the moment, putting a good latest effort at um, Newmarket in a group 3 where it finished third. Tends to run from the front this horse and it also is very versatile, it likes uh, soft ground, it's got a few wins under its belt under soft ground and I thought at a price tomorrow 13 to 2 that was quite interesting there and that's our second selection on our Each Way Lucky 15, our first one. Uh, tomorrow, our uh, third selection tomorrow at Goodwood in the 3 o'clock is a horse called Battle of Jericho, trained by Aidan O'Brien. His son, Don and Shirt O'Brien, is running tomorrow. I thought this was quite an interesting horse on paper. One last time at uh, Leopardstown in the Maiden, just over a couple of weeks ago, where ran not a bad race. And Aidan O'Brien's horses tend to uh, be uh, the improving type of um, horse. And I thought at a price tomorrow, he's 14 to 1 bookmakers at the moment. In what was quite a wide open race, in my opinion, I thought the Battle of Jericho could be possibly the each way angle on the race. And I thought at a price was very interesting. Um, New, uh, newcomer really because all these horses haven't uh, got a lot of races under their belt. We don't really know what they're totally capable of. We've only just seen a few glimpses of them in a couple of runs. But I thought Battle of Jericho was quite interesting for connections and that's why I've gone for him there as our third selection in the three o'clock at Goodwood. We then go to the big race of the day which is the Sussex Stakes in the 3.35 at Goodwood. On paper it's a two horse race really in the market between Ribchester and Churchill. I've gone for a Ribchester, which is uh, trained by Richard Fahey, which is probably his best horse in a stable. William Buick takes a ride who's been riding him a lot recently, and he's been riding him to winners in those races. This uh, horse will love the ground tomorrow. He does meet Churchill, however, who will need to bounce back from a disappointing Royal Ascot where it finished fourth, ending its unbeaten run of, uh, I think it was about six or seven wins it managed to notch up. 
So uh, Churchill will need to bounce back tomorrow. I thought it was a bit of a surprise that he ran badly at Royal Ascot. But he won't mind the ground tomorrow. He's won a few times on heavy and yielding ground. So that's not really an issue for Churchill. It's just to see if he can bounce back from um, his... Uh, blip at uh, Royal Ascot but I thought Ribchester was quite interesting he's been running really well of late he also um, last time when he ran on soft ground and won that day he had Britain Rock um, behind him a few lengths who's subsequently gone on to win today at Goodwood and I thought Ribchester at the two uh, likely contenders in the race currently evens with bookmakers at the moment I didn't think that was the worst prize you were going to see there with Ribchester and if you can take him early at anti-post and you can find a bookmaker that does best odds like Sky Bet, that's not a bad price really to take because even if he does shorten and does win you're going to be happy and patting yourself on the back there so that's the end of our first each way lucky 15 um, bet there our second each way lucky 15 bet commences with this selection and it's the fifth selection on the card we go to the 4 uh, 10 at goodwood and the horse that we've gone for here is a horse called super symmetry trained by tom Daskum, and his uh, main jockey that he normally uses richard kingscote takes a ride in this maiden race which is very hard on paper to predict like we uh, said um, for today's running uh, in the maiden there in the 4 10 these uh races tend to be very hard um, to predict because only a few horses might have had a run and a lot of them could be total newcomers same kind of situation here tomorrow i thought this horse super symmetry was quite interesting at a price currently 12 to 1 with bookmakers at the moment he ran his maiden on soft ground at haydock where he finished fourth and he blew the start but he kept on quite well and there could be suggestions that this horse could maybe improve Tom Daskam tends to improve his horses as they get more runs under their belt. Richard King's coat is a good jockey. And I thought at a price tomorrow in a race that's going to be very hard to uh, get your teeth into, he could be maybe one that could uh, bring a surprise. Our uh, next selection is our nap for tomorrow. White Chocolate, trained by David Simcock. Josephine Gordon takes a ride. This is a previous course and distance winner. Um, a good we're back in June. It then went on to run at Chester where it finished um, a length and a half down behind TT McVie, um, which it meets again tomorrow, which is a Mark Johnson trained horse. Uh, it lost at Chester, but Chester's always a tough track uh, for horses because it's very sharp. But I thought White Chocolate could definitely bounce back tomorrow, overturn the form with more favourable conditions. It won't mind a cut in the ground either. And like I said, I think it's very well handicapped off a mark of 85. And I definitely think he can overturn the form tomorrow. Currently 5-1 to one bookmakers at the moment. And I can see Josephine Gordon riding the winner there, hopefully, for White Chocolate in the 4.45 at Goodwood. We then go over to uh, the 5.50 at Goodwood. I don't know why there's such a big break. I'm not sure if there's a charity race or something. Because normally I don't know why there would be an hour gap on a card unless there is a charity race. So do let us know why... There is an hour gap between races at Goodwood tomorrow. But in the 5.50, my long shot for tomorrow is a horse called Medieval. Trained by Paul Cole. Franberry takes a ride. 21 bookmakers at the moment. Loves soft conditions. And he should be getting that tomorrow after all the rain that would have been falling on the ground. This horse, back towards the end of last year, won a race at Epsom off a mark of 104. He's handicapped off a mark tomorrow of 92. He hasn't had soft ground at all yet this year, but he should get his first crack at favourable conditions and been plummeting down the handicaps. I thought 20 to 1 was definitely a good uh, rating for this horse tomorrow in the market and that's going to be our long shot tomorrow in the last race at Goodwood. We go over to Galway for the summer plate and the horse that we've gone for here is Shane's Hill in the 535. It's Ruby Walsh, Willie Mullins combination. He's been running very well of late in Autoy in France on soft ground. And I thought he should definitely be in the mix tomorrow. And I thought 8-1, to one, that wasn't a bad price there. And I definitely think he should be in contention for that race tomorrow. So anyway, if you've had a good day at Goodwood, let us know in the comments box below. Also as well, follow us on Twitter at LuckyLoads15. You can also like us on Facebook at Lucky Loads 15. Also, to let you know, we're going to be at Glorious Goodwood on Thursday, where I'll be on Twitter giving you my thoughts and feelings about Glorious Goodwood, what's going on. Also, as well, gamble responsibly, always gamble within your means. And yeah, hopefully, we'll have a good day of um, day two of Glorious Goodwood tomorrow. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and we'll see you soon.